Hello. Hello. <laughs> You're very welcome to this year's Edible Estates project brought to you by Monaghan Integrated Development or MID. Just going to tell you a little bit about what to expect in the program and then we're going to get right into this month this week's video and um, so essentially what we are going to do is offer you 10 different videos through the course of the food growing program and they're all going to look at different topics which we will share with you as we go along um, we'll also have a space where you can check in on a one-to-one -one basis with with our team about how your growing is going, how anything that's coming up for you in your garden, any problems you might have had with planting at anything that comes up. And we can do that um, over the phone between on Monday mornings between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. And then again on Wednesdays between 3.30 and 5.30. So please do get in contact if you would like to check in with us during those times. The other thing we're going to do during the course of the project are two face-to-face -face workshops where we're going to bring a group of growers from Clonus and from Castle Blaney together and we're going to look at different projects that we could possibly do together into the future around food growing so it's really exciting and to do all of this we're going to be offering a private Facebook group where we can check in and get to know each other a little bit more and we'll be posting tips and we'll be sharing the videos there so if you haven't already joined the Facebook group the link is just below this video and please do join if you're not on Facebook that's totally fine just get in touch with us and we'll find a different way to share all the information with you so you don't miss out on anything my name's Karen um, this is Conan I'm gonna pass oh. you over to him now in a sec and um, we also um, Two other members of our team are Floss, who some of you might have met last year, and Gareth, who was doing some of the deliveries as well. Um, you'll be checking in with myself and Floss mainly over the phone, but um, you'll meet all of us at different times during the project, so we're really excited. We, we all work at Shield Decree Cooperative here in Carrick Macross, and that's where we're bringing the videos to you from. Lots of practical work this week, checking in on plants that we've planted already. and f Finishing planting out the seedlings and the plants that we've left to populate the beds with and then we're going to put up some supports for the peas and for the beans. We're also going to talk about food growing in general and give you some tips on how you can improve the conditions for your plants. So to check in with what is in each bed. In bed one, you have coriander, pea, beans, onions, celery, beetroot. In bed two then, you should have strawberries, broccoli, rocket and leeks so far. But it is officially summer since the 1st of May, we are still experiencing some cold weather that may affect your plants and their growth. So here Karen's planting the chives. They're just going to go into bed number one in the corner like shown. We'll move to bed two, where we'll put in our cabbage, our cauliflower and our spinach. So we're putting them halfway between the leeks and the rocket. So Karen's just making a hole here, going to gently tip the casing into her hand taking care not to touch the roots and then just place it into the hole and firm it down. It's very tight in here although they look small at present these plants will grow larger and larger and take up lots of space. Hopefully you have space to put them in there now and just keep a hand space between the cauliflower and the cabbage. Then we're going to use the back corner to plant the spinach, as Karen is showing here. You will also have received some seeds in the last few days. These are nasturtiums. They're going to go into bed one beside the beans and the peas. So what I'm doing is just I'm making a little hole with my finger and pushing the seed down, down to about my first knuckle. The carrot seeds are much smaller than the nasturtiums and you probably haven't got this many I've only got maybe six or eight on my hand here so they're also going to go in bed one near the chives that Karen has planted there so I'm just making a small trench just with my finger or the trowel so they're only going to go in again 
not even up to my first knuckle so just placing them and sprinkling them into the open trench evenly as possible and then just sealing up the, the cut and patting the soil down. In bed two then we're going to sow the calendula seeds. These are the little curvy lads. We've got about six of them as well. What we're going to do is similar to how we sowed the carrot seeds, is just open up the trench or a little cut behind the leeks. And then covering it over, sewing it up a little bit. And of course at the end, watering it in. Of course check the weather forecast as well, it might rain soon. But watering gently the seeds and all the seedlings that we've planted. All of the plants we have chosen, with the exception of the tomato, are hard enough to keep outside at this time of year. But we can also take extra care to keep them safe. Keep an eye on the weather, fleece them if needed, and also of course, water them if needed. Got some bits and pieces here that are going to make a tripod to support the peas and the beans as they grow. So you can use sticks, but I'm going to use the bamboo here and some bale and twine that I've just found. So you can make a little knot here called a clove hitch and then slide one of the pieces into it. I'll link a YouTube video so you can see this in more detail. But what I'm doing is I'm just lining the tree up beside each other and then I'm going up, down, around, around the end, down underneath, around, up over, around, and then just tightening those up. So after firming in the tripod and making sure it's secure, I'm just going to tie the peas up to the pole. They have these little fingers that wrap around each other to help support it. The beans don't have the same um, mechanism so they might need some support later on when they get bigger with some string or something to make sure it sits against the pole here so we seem having a bit of trouble. Well, one of the cornerstones of what we do is organic growing. So um, with conventional farming, um, the way modern industrial agriculture has gone, there's so many herbicides and pesticides that are sprayed on your food. You know if you're growing your own food that you haven't sprayed anything onto it, that it's organic. We will talk in later weeks about, about feeding organic feeds to your, to your plants, but otherwise we're not putting any pesticides down. So learning how to grow your own food has so many benefits. Um, and there has been an increase in interest in growing your own food in the last few years, particularly last year during the COVID crisis. Um, many people went out and bought seeds and actually seeds sold out. It was, really, it was really quite amazing for people who grow regularly. It was very hard to get certain plants and seeds. Um, 
And I think this is something that we did before. We, you know, our, our older generations in our families would have a connection with this. But it's something we're losing connection with. We're really losing connection with where our food comes from and how it's produced. So it's a brilliant thing that we're trying to relearn. And it's brilliant that you've tried or you've joined up with this course and you really want to learn about it because I think this is such a good thing to contribute. But so many benefits involved in it. And one of them is it's good for your health. The food that you're producing is tastier. It's more nutritious. It doesn't have the food miles attached to it. So if your food was grown in a different country or even a different part of Ireland, it might take a while for it to come to your plate. You know when you produce your own food, when you cut it, how fresh it is. And it's filled with so much more nutrition. It's so, so good for you. It's also a great way to get kids used to, um, and your, your whole family used to understanding where their food comes from and appreciating it a little bit more. It might even help picky kids, kids who, are, who are, you know, don't like to try a lot of foods to sample things that they, you might have thought they would never have tried. My daughter absolutely loves the peas that we grow. She just thinks that they're like little sweets and she's delighted with life when they come out and her and her friends are up there picking them. And, you know, it's just something that she wouldn't have eaten before, but because we grow it ourselves, she does. Um, and the other thing that really is brilliant about growing your own food is that wider nature connection that it is. Not only are you outside more and connecting more with nature, but also the stuff that you're growing here is drawing in bees and other pollinators that are needed to keep the ecosystem thriving. So you're providing habitat for them and you're creating lovely soil with microorganisms in it. It's all just so good. Top tips this week. Remember, water your plants each day. They prefer the mornings. Check for slugs and remove them every evening, especially after it rains. And check the temperature. Put the fleece on on the coldest nights. Hey.